Hello, everybody. Uh, Jeff Gibby here. How's everybody doing today? Can you hear me? Let's go ahead and start there. Hi, Michael. Hi, Trey. Uh, Mike. How are you doing? Can you hear me? <laughs> okay, good, good, good. Thanks, Al. Uh, Merry Christmas, Kirk. Happy holidays. Um, Henry. Oh, Henry, how? how good to see you. Jack. Um, good to see you as well. Do I get teased about my last name? Uh, sometimes, like when I was in the military, people would tease me a little bit because they would go, Gibby, Gibby, Gibby on the label, label, label. I guess there was a commercial about Libby's. Um, but <laughs> there you go. Let's go ahead and get started. Um, thanks for coming. Hope everybody's kind of getting used to or ready for some time off, some time with the family. <laughs> if you if you celebrate the holidays, you know, it's a, always a very international audience. So um, if it's a, a holiday you celebrate, I hope you enjoy it. And if not, hope you have a good day anyway. Let's start with the legal disclaimer. disclaimer. Uh, today's demonstration is designed to instruct you on using Metastock and the accompanying software plugins. It's not a recommendation to buy or sell, but rather guidelines to interpreting and using specific indicators and features within the software. The information, software, and techniques presented today should only be used by investors who are aware of the risk inherent in trading. Metastock shall have no liability for any investment decisions based on the use of their software, any trading strategies, or any information provided in connection with the company. Um, Trey is uh, just said in the chat, uh, funny story, I didn't realize this was the same Mark Leibovit that's on the radio on the weekends in Vancouver. Yep, he does do a little bit of that. Um, in any case, Mark uh, Leibovit is a great guy. Maybe somebody that's also been teased for his last name, I don't know. We'll ask him. But um, he's a very, very good technician. He um, has been uh, rated uh, there's a there's a company out there called Timer Digest. Uh, he's been rated many many times, uh, top gold tar timer. Um, in in some cases, top market timer for like a 10 year period, which is pretty impressive. So I can go ahead and bring him on here. A bar call ask you to go ahead and unmute your microphone, and we'll make sure we can hear you. Mark. Um, you, hear, Mark, you hear me now. Uh, there you you go. now. <laughs> I was going to start giving you instructions. Okay, the button you've clicked on to mute yourself. Yes, I can hear you, Mark. So I Here guess the go. important question is, is, has anybody ever teased you for your last name? Oh, probably when I was, you know, five, six, seven years old, I think so. And when I was in camp, I can't remember what they said at the time, but you know, <laughs> instead of, of leap of it, maybe leap a bit or something like that, you know? Maybe Just, something. Yeah. So, so I uh, tell us a little. Uh, l help me introduce you. Uh, tell me a little bit of more about kind of like these top market timer awards that you won. Well, Timer Digest is an independent group. You know, they rank a lot of newsletter publishers, and uh, they've been following me for a number of years. And uh, they they rank, you know, based on signals that you send them. You know, where you think uh, we're in a bull, bear, or neutral phase in the market, uh, bonds and gold as well. And, uh, they, you know, this is like what I did years ago when I was an elf on the old, old Lewis Rue Kaiser TV show. They would check with you every week and ask you, are you a bull or a bear? Uh, I get the request even now from Kitgo and Gold and, you know, various other services. So they, they, they compile all that and somehow they come up with, uh, with you know, rankings based on these weekly or biweekly signals that you provide them. Of course, this has very little to do with short-term trading, the kinds of things we do here at VR Trader or with the VR Index but you know they like to have uh, general comments and uh, somehow I luckily get into the right list and uh, comes out on top. Cool. Um, all right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get out of the way a little bit. Uh, question from Bob, real quick, as we get started, are we recording today? We always record, and uh, uh, it'll definitely be up on our YouTube channel within hopefully a couple of days. Everybody around here is starting holidays. So this is actually my last event this year, which is crazy. In any case, let's go ahead, uh, Mark. The um, screen will ask you if you want to present, share your screen. So. 
And you see it? I see it, yep. Good, it's working. All right, I'm going to get out the way. Go for it. Okay, well, thanks, Jeff. Uh, you're looking at um, a com combination, compilation of my home screen at vrtrader.com. So this is a little bit of a commercial for VR Trader as well as for Metastock. And uh, I do have a series of newsletters. It used to be called Volume Reversal Survey back in the uh, oh, 1980s and uh, eventually became VR Trader in the 1990s when the Internet came about. But anyway, we have various uh, services. Obviously, we like to you check them out. We have uh, various newsletters, uh, specific recommendations provided on platinum gold and our new vice letter uh, you get a kick about uh, on that visual a little bit because it's a little uh, provocative but you know we cover uh, gaming stocks alcohol uh, and the new cannabis stocks which have been very successful for us this past year in fact they have a couple visuals for that later in the presentation but as you probably or maybe you know probably don't know there's about two three hundred publicly traded cannabis stocks out there so we're looking for action and if I see volume come in we trade them and we had some pretty big winners over the year so uh, I also have our book the traders book of volume if you want to learn more about what I do and it is a compilation of the key volume indicators. Uh, so if you want a free uh, copy of a weekly report, Vice News Raw, text get vice to 33444. That's not the vice letter itself, but it's like news on the cannabis industry. So just go to that address, get vice to 33444. 444 and you get that weekly report. We have the same thing for Gold News Raw. It just talks about news in the gold industry. It's not a gold letter itself, but you just have to go to our homepage at vrtrader.com for that. And again, this is our book, which is available in Chinese. So obviously, we hope that you like the presentation and you sign up for uh, a free trial here, and Jeff will be happy to help you out in that regard. We do offer a free trial. The details Jeff will provide for you, and I believe it's $99 a month going forward. And uh, you know, I created this indicator when I was a uh, floor trader back uh, in the late 1970s, early 1980s when I was on the Chicago Board Options Exchange. And it's pretty much very simple. Volume precedes price, and the volume reversal is a trigger for me. And I uh, almost use it exclusively in my short-term recommendations, and it even has near-term implications when you put on weekly and monthly charts. Uh, real briefly, we don't want to spend a lot of time on my background, but we do have a slide here, CBOE. I was director of research of a couple of brokerage firms, uh, or through the book. I used to be, in recent years, a portfolio manager for a long, short REIT uh, hedge fund, uh, former Kaiser Elf. You may have seen me on that show or on the nightly business report with Paul Kangas for 30 years. I am a SEMA certified investment management analyst. I'm accredited investment fiduciary, AIF. I'm a member of the CFA Society. I'm also a member of the Market Technicians Association. My radio show is available if, if you want to hear our weekly um, thoughts and some interview from guests. Maybe we'll have uh, Jeff on the show one day if he'd like to join us. I've invited him, but he hasn't responded to me, so hopefully he will do that soon. Uh, GCNlive.com. It's called Wall Street Raw. And we interview a lot of people, talk about markets and their opinions. So uh, you get GCNlive.com or you can it's archived on GCNlive.com and iTunes, and you can also hear it on KFNN 1510 Phoenix. Uh, it's archived uh, there as well. Uh, Timer Digest, that's a visual, and Jeff went over all these accreditations, so we'll skip through all these all these rankings that I uh, was accredited for, and um, let's get down to uh, a little bit more of what the presentation is about. Uh, we do offer the VR Volume Reversal Toolkit here. Uh, when you get the kit, it has three components to it, um, the VR Sequential, VR Directional, and the two-day versions and we'll show examples of those in just a moment but in summary the sequential shows all positive and negative volume reversals the directional filters out repetitive VRs and a two-day is basically a two-day signal based on the premise that if you generate a negative or positive volume reversal you tend to get movement in that direction for a couple of trading days um, so we're going to jump around here a little bit. I want to jump right into this, then we're going to go back into some of the other things that I look at as well as an analyst. But this is one example that I put up, uh, Freeport, McMoran, FCX, which is one of my favorite uh, trading stocks. You're looking, we're going to look at it in three versions. Um, here it's a sequential version, which means all positive and negative VRs are posted on the screen. This is what I look at. This is my typical chart. 
you wonder what else I look at, really nothing else. I mean, of course, I want to know what business they're in and uh, what the markets are doing and are we getting any group action and so forth. But the screen you're looking at is Freeport uh, McMorrin and uh, uh, I have a blue line, which is the 50-day uh, moving average, and you've got the green line, which is your 200-day uh, uh, moving average up there. Uh, I put a what I call a um, momentum indicator. It's really a stochastic 533 up on the screen, and uh, I don't really use the volume bars on the bottom, but they're there. So a volume reversal is basically a change of price and a change of volume. And um, just to jump in, uh, you know, a quick example here, um, circling a, a positive volume reversal here. And uh, we had a little bit of a rising stochastic, so that made me feel a little bit better about the trade. And basically that's it. So buyers came in at that point in the market. That's a trading signal for me. And as you can see, there was follow through for a couple trading days beyond that point. And that's how I really trade it. I try to take a couple day trades out of this, even though uh, we could, we're going to look later into weekly and monthly charts. You can try to make some intermediate forecasts. But I'm more of a ring the register type guy and I'm relatively short term. Uh, coming back here, Oh, maybe 10 or so trading days. This was in November. You can see a little positive VR was formed as well. Nice follow through. In fact, it's a nice dramatic move here over a day or two time frame at a rising stochastic. That made me feel good about it. Now, what the general parameters that I follow, just to give you an idea, is when I generate a positive volume reversal, and I guess let's look at, or a negative, but we'll look at the positive for, for the moment. Um, if I get a positive VR, that's telling me volume and price are reversing and we should move in that in that direction okay and a mental stop for me would be the low from where that volume reversal came from so if I get a VR in this day this little point right here when I'm circling that low of that previous day I don't have the exact number here because it's not a live chart that would be my mental stop on the trade uh, conversely let's just go a couple three days back here a negative volume reversal came in if I wanted to trade that negative VR which you could have because there was a little bit of follow-through not, not a lot but there was and you had a downtrending stochastic my mental stop would be right at this point here, the high from where the negative volume reversal came. In other words, if I'm going to be wrong, I'm going to be wrong really fast. If sellers are coming in here and they're going to come up as they did a few days later, you don't want to go above that point. Conversely, if you're buying on this positive ER and the buyers came in off this low, bingo, that's the low, that's the reversal point. You don't, you don't want to be hanging around any time beyond that. So that's sort of the general theory behind the VR. What I like about it is it's instantaneous, if, particularly if you get live uh, data, uh, you the sellers you can see coming in right away, um, and uh, you know, you're not waiting for uh, moving averages, even though we have a little momentum indicator here. This is telling me volume is moving with price, and there's a good chance you're going to get some follow through over time. So that this screen you're looking at again is the sequential version of the indicator that you can subscribe for here on Metastock and it's showing all the VRs. So let's go to the next one, it's the same chart and this is the directional version of the same of the same F FCX. Okay, so we've done here what the um, directional version does is it filters out repetitive VRs. So if there was, you know, several positive VRs in the sequence, you'd only see, you only see a, a VR as a new one is generated, essentially that's what's telling you. So if a negative VR comes in here, uh, basically it's not, it's not showing you any other negatives that might have occurred until a positive comes in or, or until you're stopped out of that trade. If we had rallied above that little high point, I'm pointing to here, you'd have been stopped out, that would have changed the signal, but negative VR, positive, negative, it only shows new, new ones or points until you were stopped out in this little blue line, a little stop out signals that are generated on the software, these little blue lines that you see here. So if, for example, here, this little negative VR I'm pointing to in the middle of the screen, that little blue line came in. Why? Because that high, just before that little down bar was taken out and that just signaled, hey, you were stopped out. That's a rule that I just gave you a moment ago. So a little blue little figure comes up and tells you that would have been a stop point right away. But you would have known it because, as I mentioned, this general rule, you don't want to see it go below the high if a negative VR is being formed. Okay, So the directional provides you a stop and it filters out repetitive volume reversals in this, of the same type. 
So again, a series of positives would not be shown unless you were stopped out or a negative came in. So we created this. Uh, I, I don't use this as much as the, as the sequential because I like to see all of them, but it was sort of we created it because it did provide that stop for you. And if you're uncertain about it, at least you can see the little blue uh, stop come in. And keep in mind, this is a daily chart. I mean, you could use this at any time frame. And uh, I don't really trade that way, but the advantage of using a program like Metastock is that now you can play with different time frames. And I do have trader friends of mine who use this on five-minute charts in the uh, E-mini S&P intraday and uh, you can see the same kind of pattern where you get follow through after a positive or negative VR. So uh, I don't trade that way but it, it does have power in, in every time frame because think about it, you are just following the momentum of that volume coming in at that moment. Let's go on to the next chart and I want to get, that's why I want to get to these really quickly because we get confused by talking about other things and not jumping into the VR. This is the two day and this, again, this was a creation that was suggested to me, and it, there's a lot of noise on the screen here because obviously it's it's not blown up. But if you're blown up close to it, it would make more sense. But this will, this basically is based on the theory that following two days, you're out of the trade. Simple as that. It doesn't mean that the stock or index couldn't have gone further, but uh, if we go over here on the right side of the screen where it's a little less uh, busy, uh, positive ER came in, as you can see. One bar, two bars, little blue signal comes in, you're out. That's basically all it's saying, two days. Why? Because over time we found statistically that when you get a negative VR, it moves at least for a couple days in the direction of the uh, volume reversal. So we decided to create a little tool for that purpose. Uh, nothing is perfect, but this is just based on that theory. And then over here, there's a positive VR, and you're out on the second bar. Again, it could be five-minute bars, weekly bars. But in this case, it's a daily bar. So the stops are also provided. Same rule as before, when the high prior to a negative VR is taken out, you're stopped out, or if the low prior to a positive VR is uh, taken out, you're stopped out. You get the little blue uh, signal there, and uh, I mean, that gives you a little trading exit point. But basically, uh, you're, out on two, you're out on two days with the, uh, with the indicator. So that's the summary of the three versions, and we use Freeport, which, by the way, again, as I mentioned, is one of my favorite stocks. I've been trading this thing a lot, and uh, my personal prejudice is this stock's going a lot higher. It's in a corrective uh, phase here, but uh, uh, you know we're thinking it could be in the mid 20s, uh, you know, down the road here, not too great distant future. I think it was in the 60s in the last uh, couple three years, got down to about uh, four bucks, and we've been trading it up from four up to 14, and now it's in a little bit of a pullback phase. We're going to jump back to other examples in just a moment, but at least I want to introduce the three versions so you can see what this is all about. Uh, there's all of the kinds of things that are on the software. Um, it, when you pull it up, you can see you can pull up actually uh, futures options, gold, heating oil, natural gas, palladium, and apply the chart to that. Uh, you can do that anyway, but there's little options on the screen that allow you to uh, be more specific with these various uh, markets. I'm going to backtrack now for a second, a little bit of things that are about me and uh, about the um, newsletter and some of my philosophy in the market. So uh, if you'll bear with me for about five minutes, and then we'll jump back and look at more specific system stuff. M many of you may be familiar with the uh, Stock Traders Almanac. Um, this was the first book, uh, if you can call it a book, it's an almanac, a reference book that Yale Hirsch created back in the 1970s. And if you haven't gotten a copy, you should. I read the first version back in the uh, Oh, mid-1960s, that's how far back I go, and this influenced me a great deal about being in the stock market. Well, in the 1987 version, this is about 20 years after I read the book, uh, Yale Hirsch uh, dedicated his book to me and four other, three other technical analysts, you may know the other names, Lynn Elgert, Peter Elides, uh, Robert Prechter, and he called us the new prognosticators. And the reason I bring this example up is because this is one of the main impetus for me staying in the business and doing what I was doing. Here I'm in college reading a little book uh, in the 1960s and uh, uh, 20 years later the fellow that wrote the book honors me and three other people you know honoring his students and uh, this gave me encouragement that I'm obviously on the right track or doing something I enjoy so this is you know one of the great moments of my life and I'm indebted to Yale Hirsch for his uh, credit but also for the great work that uh, he created and I still use his uh, 
is Almanac today. In fact, my annual forecast model, which is one of the products in my VR volume reversal newsletter, unrelated to volume, is a cyclical tool that is derived in great part by what uh, Yale teaches in his Doctorator's Almanac. I'm also a little bit on the, I don't, I don't want to say conspiracy side of the market, but I understand that, you know, uh, we have rigged markets uh, in the world and uh, there are a lot of things that we need to be aware of. Many of you may or may not be aware of the Plunge Protection Team, which is the uh, Ronald Reagan, I think it's 12631 executive order that was signed back in 1988 and uh, their involvement in the markets. Uh, we know markets are rigged. Uh, you can see what's going on with uh, Draghi in Europe, with Japan and China, the control of interest rates and currency. So all we're trying to do with uh, VR analysis or any technical analysis is trying to follow the trend and we're not going to change any of the rules or change any of the players, but you need to know, as we probably, most of us do know by now, unless you're totally new to the markets, that you know the market's on a level playing field and the Fed's controlling stuff. But this is an interesting quote that I always use in my presentations, and it was written by Ben Bernanke in a letter to Milton Friedman on his 90th birthday. If you know Milton Friedman, the Nobel economist, late Nobel economist from University of Chicago, and he said, uh, and this is way back in 2002, he said, let me end my talk by abusing slightly my status as an official of the of Federal Reserve. This is Bernanke talking. I like to say to Milton and Anna regarding the Great Depression, you're right, we did it. We're very sorry, but thanks to you, we won't do it again. So here's the uh, representative of the Federal Reserve admitting that the government was responsible for, at least in part, for the uh, for the Great Depression. And you can read the rest of the quote. But basically, you know, this has been a very important uh, quote for me over the years, and just saying that you know we really have to understand what uh, the powers that be are doing and uh, the influence they do have in the markets. Also, I'm a bit of a cynic when it comes to the financial press. They don't like me very much, but generally you can make a lot of money by doing the opposite what you hear on CNBC or what you read in the papers. And these are just old examples, but they're, they're still very valid. I have literally hundreds of these, and we can, I have actually done presentations where we show a hundred of these up on the screen. And uh, But this is just one. This is the uh, top in the market well back in March uh, 2000, the big NASDAQ top. W way back then, as you know, it only took this past year for the NASDAQ to get back to 5,000 after you know all these years of uh, treading water and fighting the uh, the, uh, the uh, currents of the market, but uh, this was the day of the high, March 10, 2000, where the uh, Wall Street Journal pumps up their muscles and talks about uh, you know how strong the market is. So this is a sign of a top. Not too many years later, a couple, three years later, they did just the opposite with a bear, virtually near the lows. The actual low came uh, about eight, nine months later, but the internal low of the market was in 2002, and the, when this came out, I knew we were approaching some type of low. But if you just look at cover stories, listen to the press, you have to say to yourself, what are the charts really telling us, and uh, you know, what do we really see in, in the charts, not what, what you're hearing on TV. Is a stock or market really down? Is it in a bottoming formation? Is it really up and exuberant? And uh, I don't want to name names, but there's certain you know famous analysts on CNBC that you can virtually do the opposite after stocks have made big moves. You hear them talking about it, and it's time to more than likely go into the opposite direction. So I, you know, I, I put this into my thinking because I'm always looking at my charts and my volume reversal, and I see it up a lot. Everybody loves it, and I start getting a negative volume reversal. That tells me, well, that's confirming exactly the thought that you've got to fade conventional wisdom and also use your technical work. This is a classic example. Uh, another class, this is 2010, September. Time Magazine tells us to rethink home ownership. And if you think about this for a second, this was the time to be buying houses. And they're telling you this may not be a time to buy houses. Some of the smartest people I know are loading up on houses here in Phoenix and Las Vegas, double, tripled, more, more of them tripled their money on the houses. But Time Magazine, virtually at the low, told you not to be in home. So this is very important. You've got to watch the headlines out there and understand that the financial press is as emotional or as uneducated as any source you could possibly uh, uh, you know, refer to in terms of timing the markets. And they're not very good at this at all. So something to think about when you're listening and hearing the, what the press is saying. I've already defined the volume reversal for you. It's basically an algorithm that measures volume shifts from buyers to sellers and from sellers to buyers. And this is the definition for the uh, uh, two-day, which uh, and we're going to show some examples. These are older examples here that uh, 
we had on the screen, and this is a little schematic of the uh, of uh, the theory behind the two day, where you get a little blue uh, marker with two days after the event. And this is just another example, and to see another one here, we have Google. This is an old example from 2006, but shows you the uh, the two day at work. These are a little clearer examples because they were constructed, and they're not the actual chart, but and they don't have the color, but they give you a little clear sense of what we're talking about. So positive ER forms and two bars later you're out. Okay, I'm just going to flip through these, but these are just good visualizations of the theory. Um, also on uh, Metastock, when you click on the signal, a little box pops up and this gives you a little bit of uh, instruction. So it's really cool. I don't have this on my other software, but it is on Metastock and it's very, very useful. So you're getting a positive VR here. This is the Google example we just saw and a little instruction. A positive VR has been generated. Enter a long position and uh, open a protective stop and it gives you the actual number, which it's calculating based on the same rule that I gave you, that it's at low prior or just under the low prior to where the positive VR was formed. Okay, So a nice little box pops up for you there and uh, that's really uh, really cool on uh, Metastock. Um, let's see, this is a uh, also a two-day uh, signal on the, uh, this is, would be GDXJ, which is the junior uh, market vectors uh, gold mining ETF, and you can see the little signals at work here. Again, uh, you get a negative OM reversal, and uh, this, in this particular instance here, you can see how it was downtrending for, you know, a couple of weeks, but According to the two-day version, you just took two-day trades along the way. Big two A's, negative two days, and you could have stayed with it, I guess. I'm just saying this this particular tool just gives you the ability on two days to take a trade only on the theory that you get a couple-day follow-through after a negative VR or a positive VR. Not every one. Obviously, the ones that don't work out, you're going to be stopped out of, but in these examples here, these are all almost like a picture-perfect example. I can't even find an error on this on this, on this the screen. And here's the same chart again. You know, you click on the little VR, and then a little box opens, and it just tells you, uh, you know, well, this is not the uh, GDX, but this is a gold chart, and this is the same example where you get a positive VR, and an instruction sheet comes up for you, a little pop-up telling you that a positive VR has been formed, and you can establish a long position, and you know where your stop is. On the other hand, of course, you've got this little two little bar thing, a little blue bar thing coming up two days later, and that's telling you, well, you had your two-day trade, so you can exit if you wish to, and this is just a tool, and if you feel it's going to go further, you have other indicators, but the whole goal of this is just to provide guidance for a, a short-term trade. And that's, again, I didn't say this earlier, but I sort of implied it when I say I ring the register a lot. One of the things I learned on the floor when I was a floor trader years ago, the uh, the traders that I studied with, or at least I, I monitored, literally they closed positions out every day and took a check home every night from the clearing firm. And they looked at it as a job. They were getting paid every day. And in, in that sense, this is what we're doing if you're traders. If you're an investor, you can be holding a whole bunch of stocks in a portfolio or have a money manager handle your money for you, or you can own a mutual fund or ETF and just walk away from the markets. But if you're doing this day to day like I do, and I assume you do, you're doing, you know, you want to make money every day or as close to that as possible. And if you can make it every day and if you can get a, a nice trade, why not go to cash? And then in the case of a couple day trade, like here on the two day, you know, put it in your pocket. You know, there's always going to be new trades, always new opportunities. Uh, we're not investors using my discipline. You can be on longer term time frames if you believe, you know, markets are going up. But uh, for the day to day, it's a trading system. It's a training approach. You know, put the money in your pocket. More examples here. We're going to flip through as many as we can. You know, we only have uh, so much time. We'll go through as many as we can. Just silver, SLV, daily. This is another example of a two-day at work. You can see again, uh, negative VR comes in. You're out two days later. And again, on the screen, if you touch the little uh, signal, a little box pops up for you and it tells you the obvious, but it's there. Negative VR has been generated. A short position should be generated. It tells you where the stop is, which would be this little point above here. And on the two-day, you're out two days later. 
This is an example of a 60-minute chart. Uh, again, all time frames. You can sit here all day long, put up any stock or index, and put the VR up on a daily, weekly, five-minute, any time frame you want, and see what works best for you. Again, I'm more on a daily person, you know, daily trade uh, person. I'm not into the five-minute stuff. It's just too stressful for me. I'd rather just catch a day-to-day -day move. But uh, here we go on a 60-minute chart. You can see there was some nice reliability. Uh, with this particular example with Intel, this again it's an older example from a few years ago, but an intraday basis, you know, if you're willing to trade 60 minutes, you know, two bars later there was follow through following these negative VRs, and uh, there is power, you know, to the volume on all time frames. Pan American Silver is an example as well. So let's just flip through these because I think I made the point on the two day. And uh, these are just more examples of the two-day. So now we're going to go to the sequential again, which I already showed you with Freeport, but we're going to show some you know, other examples here that displays all the historical positive and negative VRs. So again, when you're on the program, you can decide which one you want to use. I use, uh, as I mentioned several times already, the sequential. And it's just based on the theory that you're showing all the VRs on the screen. What it also does is it counts consecutive VRs. So if you're getting three, four, or five of them, and it just puts a little number in a parentheses next to the uh, VR. And uh, this is just uh, this is not really that important for trading, but it just gives you a sense. Well, this uh, stock or index is in an uptrend. We've generated four or five of them, and it just sort of reinforces that you're in a positive uh, mode. Opposite, of course, if it was a negative VR. So <clears throat> this is the um, flash crash from 2010 and I bring this up as an example because the you know I take a lot of credit for these things as in my book the traders book of volume we actually talk about this in the introduction uh, I've never been caught in a market crash including the going back to 1987 in fact, I was on the Wall Street Week television program with Louis Rukeyser warning in September of 1987 to watch out for the third week of October, and sure enough, we had the crash. But one of the reasons for that, as we are seeing here in the March, uh, April, May, March period of 2010, we start generating negative VRs, and this was in the S&P daily chart. This is again showing all the VRs, and this told me something was wrong. And uh, we put out sell signals, you know, get out of the market. There's going to be a pullback. Now, I had no way of knowing there's going to be a thousand point intraday sell off, which uh, happened, as you recall, on May 6, 2010. We've had a couple of these already, as you know, in the last couple of years uh, following Brexit. And we saw a big sell off following the Trump victory and so forth and so on. So we do see more volatility as of late. But this was really unusual in 2010. And um, again, I, I made the call to get out as I did before 9-11, believe it or not, before 1987, uh, many other instances when I start seeing a series of positive uh, or negative ERs cluster, in this case negative, telling me there's distribution and the uh, market's going to go down. So this is a, one of the powerful examples of the uh, sequential when you get a pattern like that. Also, this is around the same time frame. You know, you started purchasing uh, negative ERs in Bank of America before we had the uh, big banking uh, sell-off or crisis. So when you start seeing a cluster of negatives, even if whether you're trading them or not, you could be trading these. But I'm just in terms of general market direction. You start seeing a cluster like that that warns you that something could be coming. This is a Palladium weekly chart. Uh, we put it up again to show uh, the impact of the VRs on weekly charts, not only on daily or five-minute charts. And this is, you know, going well back to uh, the 2006, 7, 8 period. But you can see here on a weekly chart how the VRs signaled a beautiful move to the upside, and then we finally topped out. A negative VR was formed on the weekly chart, which indeed called the high. And the fact there weren't any negative VRs up to this point really uh, I think was quite impressive that uh, the BR was able to call this big move over a long period of time. Again, I'm not trading weekly charts. This is just for informational purposes, but it makes some terrific intermediate insights. And it is valuable because if you're trading Palladium at this time, you see a negative VR on the weekly charts. Obviously, uh, after a multi-year run to the upside, you're going to be thinking that you don't want to be playing too many long trades. So. That's just another example. And this particular one here, same example, when you clicked on that little negative VR on the weekly chart, a box opens up telling you if you wish to trade on a weekly basis, because this is a weekly chart, you got a negative VR. Your stop is a point right above where that signal came in, and uh, it gives you the instructions. 
Another example, weekly chart of work in the uh, sequential. Negative VRs here. Again, we're not using stochastics here. We're not using any other indicators or moving averages. We're just looking at the pure VRs here just to show you the power of the VR itself. And uh, again, the fact that it was applied to a different time frame, in this case uh, weekly, where negative VRs show clear downtrend and then suddenly a cluster of positive VRs start to form. And sure enough, the trend changes to the upside. So if anyone's a proponent of volume, you're, you're, you're listening to him on this broadcast because to me, this is the key to the market and making money in the market. And what I like about volume, besides all the other reasons I gave you, is that it's telling you at that moment in time, this is what is happening. These buyers are coming in. These sellers are coming in. You're not looking at news. You're not looking at uh, anything else. You're just, you're just following the momentum of the so-called smart money in the market. This is why intellectually it keeps you honest. You know, are there are buyers there? And if so, you know, that's it. Something must be happening. And, you know, we're not insiders in the market, but this gets us as close as to being an insider as you could ever be because you're following the, uh, the smart money. And here's that same example in copper we just looked at. And the uh, instruction thing pops up here. Nice little uh, box for you. This is what's cool about Metastock. I'm just going to flip through a couple of these. Uh, this is U.S. dollar examples going back. Google, uh, weekly chart, uh, negative VRs. The point of these was more to show other time frames because most of what I concentrate in is, as I said, on the uh, daily oracle. Um, let's see. That's another. That, that was the flash crash again. This is the uh, S&P uh, Venture, the Canadian index. Nice correlation there as well. Uh, the bond market. Uh, one of my favorite trading vehicles is the uh, TLT, maybe with you as well. Signals really work great on the, uh, now of course, if bonds have been in a downtrend as rates are going up, but uh, if we pull up a live uh, TLT chart, you'll see the negative VRs, how uh, they clearly signaled and confirmed this current downtrend in the bond market. And uh, this is another example with JP Morgan. This is the Canadian dollar with the, uh, on a daily chart with the VRs. This is the, uh, Philadelphia Sox Index, and now let's go on to directional. We only have about 20 minutes left, so I want to make sure we get through the presentation. Same thing, uh, directional, I told you, where we filter out repetitive ERs and we provide a stop for you. Um, and this is just an example of the directional at work where you don't see all the other signals in between. Uh, this, this is... A, I show this, this is a really old example and it's sort of irrelevant to today's market, but this is one of the reasons I was bearish in 1987 uh, prior to the uh, crash. I mentioned a few moments ago that I was on the Rukeyser show and I said, um, you know, uh, watch out for October and this is the crash in October 87 here I'm circling, but you're seeing it in, in, uh, in the IBM chart. Well, you, you go back to 1987, you didn't have that many indicators out there like you do today or ETFs and all the other tools and you look for big name stocks like IBM and others to be clues for the market and uh, for me IBM was a big indicator as was names like Polaroid and Xerox and a lot of the names that really don't, you know, exist uh, today in terms of their importance in the market. Marketplace. And when I saw these negative VRs coming into IBM, they said to me, there's something going wrong here and the market's going to start coming down. And I just felt that uh, you got to be careful. That's one of the reasons why I you know, put out sort of a sell signal at the time and warned that something could be coming. You don't know what, you know, the intensity. You don't know if it's going to be just a nice steady little correction or a big washout, but you do get the warning and that's why volume is so important. Uh, this is an example. Uh, of the directional indicator applying to the gold futures contract on a 60-minute chart, again, to show you that uh, there is correlation there. So I encourage you all to put up whatever you like to trade, put on the VR in the various time frames and just look, look at the unbelievable correlation in those markets and see what kind of great signal the VR could provide for you. Here's the same signal on Metastock, you know, with the little instruction box when you click on the VR and it gives you, uh, of course this is telling you to exit the long position because we had been long prior to that in this particular trade, but uh, you can also go short because of the new signal. 
I remember this story. This was, you know, when the uh, there were those uh, riots in Egypt. Uh, this was back in 2010-11, and I remember uh, the Egyptian stock market uh, sold off, and he had this. I remember at the time we had this negative VR, and this big, you know, mini crash unfolded, and the uh, ETF for that was EGPT, and. Um, we had talked about at the time that this was a way of play, the, up, the unrest that was going on. And you actually saw it here on this one down day. There was a story about all the disruption in uh, Egypt with the, uh, you know, the takeover by the Muslim Brotherhood and everything that was going on over there. So even if you heard the story, you still had the signal. And if you had gotten on on a trade using, I suppose, you know, this little high here as a stop, you'd have benefited from a real washout in that market for a couple. Uh, you know, a few days following the events, the historical events that were occurring at the time. But interestingly, a positive VR comes in uh, and actually signaled that you can go long, which would probably been very difficult to do emotionally. But keeping a stop at this point here, it, there was a nice little trade. This is another reason why I keep saying watch those volume signals. Here is the, again with the uh, instructions. If you click on it at the time, a little bar. The box, I'm sorry, opens up and gives you the guidelines. Uh, Ford Motor Company on sequential, uh, and uh, this is the uh, Gold Corp. We're just going to flip through these here. Transocean. We have uh, this is the same Exesco uh, backspace. So here's the Transocean on the, the uh, directional. It's the same chart with the uh, instructions telling you that to cover. See, on see, the back up a second, it may be going too fast for you. So this is a weekly chart. So if you're playing the system, theoretically, on a weekly basis, that box would have opened up here, and you'd have been short from this point, and your stop would have been here. So for all these weeks, you'd have been short Transocean offshore. And then when the positive ER came in here, it told you to cover your short and now reverse to the long side. So I don't trade this way on a weekly basis, but you can see the power of this if you were an intermediate trader. Uh, I would have been trading it hopefully on a daily basis, and I don't have my charts in front of me from that time, but I presume there were some daily signals as well. Gold Comex, we already showed you that. Uh, this is on a 60 minute, uh, but this is for the uh, directional, and again with the signal and the box and the instructions. And the uh, silver daily, same thing with the box telling you to get short on the VR. Dollar index. Let's see here, I'm going to flip through a couple of these. Just more examples of them of the uh, directional. All right, so this is now, now we're getting to some more current charts here, and we don't have a lot of time. These are, these are I created in the last few days. And it shows you what the market was like here in the last several weeks, but this is the Dow Transports, which, as you know, is a big, uh, very important indicator. And this is my, uh, uh, this is a, a weekly chart of the transports. But you can see here in the last few weeks how the transports broke out big time. This is actually new all-time highs. It took uh, almost two years uh, for the, the transports to catch up or break out compared to the other indexes. But beautiful weekly signal here. I'm circling rising stochastic, and we had, you know, one, two, three, four, five, five, six, last six, seven weeks to the upside uh, in the Dow Transports. Had a beautiful uh, weekly signal there, and I want to show that to you. Also a beautiful one here back at the beginning of the year before the move started. But this is a weekly chart, and again, prior to the big decline, you can see the cluster of negative VRs here, which occurred at the end of uh, 2014, early 2015 which to me is that same type of cluster that I showed you before the flash crash. When you see a cluster of this, tells you something might be happening, and sure enough, a big downtrend unfolded. Those are, there were a couple positive trades along the way. This cluster warned you about the, what was happening or could be coming. And um, this is the S&P. Um, this is as of, I think, last night or so, last day or so. And you can see my most recent signal in the S&P is negative. So I'm negative here on the market. I know the uh, Dow made it and the S&P made new highs the last day or so. And then make it, make it today on, on the 15th. So this gives me a little negative signal. you got downtrending stochastic. So I think we topped down in the stock market here, at least short term. And maybe just a four, five, six day event. Or maybe it's something much bigger. But uh, I have measurements that told me when the Dow got to uh, uh, 19,800 or so, that would be uh, a good target, and we certainly exceeded that. Everybody's hoping we reach 20,000, but when I get a signal like this, this would tell me to get short. 
So I would be short the S&P now with a stop right above the, uh, the recent high, the, the spider that is. That's how I would play this. If I'm stopped down, I'm stopped out. But this tells me that uh, we're going down. So this is more up-to-date stuff. Let's see else what we have here. Canopy growth, I want to throw that at you. In my vice letter, uh, I cover the cannabis stocks. This is one of them. This is the big name in Canada. TWMJF, I think uh, it's CGC in Canada is the Canadian symbol, but this is what you trade here. Anyway, this has been a big winner for us this year in our vice letter, but you can see I had positive ERs here when it was a you know three four dollar stock. It got up to fourteen here in the last uh, two three weeks, and, uh, and then a negative ER and dropped for a couple of days. A positive coming in again, but this is just one of the ones that I've traded that has liquidity and is a so-called blue chip name in Canada in the cannabis space. And here in the U.S., I'm sure you've heard of GW Pharmaceutical. This actually when it was a, one of our biggest trades uh, of the year at VRTrader.com and the Vice Letter. We were actually long back here. Uh, this was in February. Uh, positive ERs came in and uh, we just got lucky on this one because this thing gapped up 50 points in one day. We were long like $33, $34 a share and it opens at 80 on some uh, FDA announcement but it's been sort of trending up ever since. But you can also see some nice correlation short term, you know, positive ER, rising stochastic, nice little trade, positive ER, negative, comes down. So, you know, there's, you can trade it along the way certainly but this is the uh, this is considered the blue chip in the uh, cannabis space in terms of a, a pharmaceutical company. As you may or may not know, they're based in the United Kingdom, and uh, uh, there's a lot of talk about possible takeover, a lot of projections toward $200 a share. It's around $118, $17 a share, uh, and you know you just have to trade it. I mean, I love to see uh, you know a big break in the stock to give us another buying opportunity, even into the high 90s. That would be great, but I don't know if we're going to get it, but. Uh, we do trade this thing. It's something you should keep on your screen, that's for sure. I don't know if you're familiar with the Bitcoin Trust. I like to talk about this really fast. Many people don't know there's an ETF for Bitcoin. It's GBTC. We've had some luck with this on a trading basis. It's not very liquid, but we do get some nice little trading signals on it. Again, using the rule that if I have a uh, positive volume reversal and a rising stochastic, and this is a daily chart, we tend to get some follow through, negative VR. Uh, downtrending stochastic here on this little trade in a couple of days to the downside, but it's a way you can trade Bitcoin without actually having to be in the digital currency itself. But we have several good trades in this very, it's very exciting little uh, vehicle for us. This is gold. I don't have to tell you how they've been hitting gold here in the last uh, few days, but look at the chart. Look at all these negative volume reversals. One, two, three, four here. This is, you know, this is again. Uh, um, this is a weekly chart, not a daily chart, but look what this, this is that cluster I was warning you about before. And, and the, so the big sell-off that we're seeing in gold here, even though I'm, I have to admit I'm more of a gold bug myself and I do hold a bunch of gold in the vault and coins and stuff like that uh, as a hedge, uh, this told you it was coming down. So we've we got to wait for some positive VRs in the gold market and hopefully we'll get something like back here, which was the end of uh, last year. Uh, in fact, I pointed this out in my gold letter over the weekend. There's been three or four instances. I don't have the dates in front of me here, but uh, we get these sell-offs at the end of the year in gold, and suddenly come January, gold takes off in the opposite direction. So we could possibly be setting up for that type of scenario now where weakness in December, tax loss selling or just general weakness sets up a big move at the beginning of uh, 2017. So let's wait for that positive VR to come in as we saw back here. But again, look at those VRs telling you we were going down. First Majestic, that's another big play here. That's a silver play. You may be familiar with that one, ticker symbol AG. Huge move. I mean, this is a great little trading stock. If you can catch it, it's showing, you know, on this particular time frame, going back a few weeks, there was a positive VR and it did trade up very nicely. It did turn negative since in the last couple of days. This chart's not up to date. But uh, it caught some beautiful moves here, you know, a $7 stock that got up to 19. Look at this positive VR here, a positive VR here all the way up, then a negative VR right off the top as it starts to come down. So great little stock. It's a, I guess it's the premier or blue chip name if you're looking to trade a silver stock, AG. So good, good with VR, good correlation there. I'm not touting the company or the stock. I'm telling you, just trade it. Look at those signals. And uh, I think uh, that sort of, sort of brings us to the end of the presentation. Um, uh, this is, again, the screen where you can go into uh, Metastock. I, this may not be the official screen where you can sign up. And, uh, Jeff, I think you wanted to uh, 
see if we had any questions here. We have about uh, eight or nine minutes, uh, about ten minutes left here, so we'll see what we can do. Hello. <laughs> Welcome back. Uh, we can let's put up see. A um, live charts here if we can, maybe, if they want. But it's okay. up to them. Uh, it's very interesting. I'm, uh, uh, I like the S&P analysis. Um, let's see. Okay, so try to ask a question when you're talking about the two-day sequential. Um, do you exit on the open of the second day or the close? Um, the the oh. bar is the bar is based on the close of the second day, but uh, knowing it's the second day and I have a profit in the beginning of the second day, I'm not I'm not going to ignore that. I might uh, you know override that and do it, but if you take the automated system, it's a, it's the end of the bar. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, let's see. What was I going to say? I'm glad you didn't try and say low because that would be a valid answer. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You want to know something? We get a positive VR, negative VR on day one, and I have a big profit on the next day. I won't even wait for the second, the, the day after that. In other words, you're, we're trading. So if you've got a nice move and you're lucky, particularly on a gap opening or some big story, and that VR was accurate, I would say you know, take the money and run. Uh, somebody wants to look at dry ship, D R Y S. Okay, you got to help me with B R Y S. Uh, dry ship, D R Y S. Oh, dry ships. Oh, yeah, that's. I'm oh, sorry, D R. Well, that, uh, Jeff, you got to help me with this one. D-R-Y-S, we have a search for the... Uh, I think it's uh, going to be dot .o. Just dot .o? Mm -hmm. I think so. All right, here we go. Go ahead and put it in there and click open chart. What's the worst thing that can happen? That's right. It'll open up the chart because you are you got the signal. There we go. This this, this, has, been re this has been really wild today. It had a big uh, move. And uh, let me I'll pull it up here. I'll put the sequential up for you because that's what I like. And then I have to put my little uh, signals in here. I, I have this color coded and everything for demonstration purposes, so you have to bear with me for a second while it loads. And let's right. put the, the little bit gotcha. VR in here and uh, let's see where it have VR. Financial equity, attach, close. There we go. Let's open it up. Okay, so uh, you can see here. How the positive VR is this? This you know it's it's so comp it's all compressed because we have to blow up the uh, screen here a little bit. Let's blow it up here a little bit. Um, of course, the spectacular move was back here in early November, where positive VR comes in. Another one thing exploded. You know, was like a short squeeze. It went up like a hundred dollars a share. It blew every everybody away in terms of its volatility. All I can tell you is right now you have a positive VR, you have a rising stochastic, and I'm bullish. Uh, uh, here, this was a, a, a daily chart, and uh, it only went for a couple days, but it still went nicely. So to, let's assume, look at this example here. Let's see, this is this was on November 30th, so it closed at uh, five and a quarter, and uh, was it a couple days later? It got up to uh, 640. So even on a modest move, you had follow through for another day or two after the positive ER. Notice here, however, we had a downtrending stochastic. This, this is not the trade I would have taken. You like to see a rising stochastic. So the fact we have a rising stochastic here and a positive VR would tell me you should have at least another day or, or two in the stock to the upside. And whether you're going to get a big move like this, that I can't say. But you know, if you get a point or two out of this thing, you know, uh, it's, uh, to me, it would be very likely you would see it over the next day or two. So this is positive. What else we got, Jeff? Uh, let's see. Take a look at TBT. TBT. Okay, this is the ultra sh short uh, bonds, right? I would say yes. 20 year okay. treasury, so it looks like. Yeah. That's my okay. <laughs> okay, just bear with me here. And uh, okay. Blow it up here for you. All right, so. Uh, Oh, 
how what can I tell you? Let's see here. It's been a nice little uptrend. Uh, uh, kind of a couple of yeah, negative come in here and you had a positive. It's sort of it's sort of mixed here, flat. Uh, what would I say? Uh, let's see, let me see if the stop the stop would have taken out here. High 42.66. Right, you would have stopped that on that negative negative VR. Um, don't know, I don't know. It's not a clear signal here. We had a couple of trades along the way for a day or two. The upside as the interest rates uh, been going up, and uh, here you got a little positive. But um, I, I would. I don't have a rising stochastic, and we already have. Uh, we already made a big move. In other words, I like to catch positives off bottoms and negatives off little peaks. In other words, I would have been short this thing honestly, and when, and according to this, I would have been stopped out because of. Uh, it went above that little high point there, but the fact we've had this big run, you know, is, is, I'm more inclined to be looking for negative VR up here, which we did get, but I would have been stopped out, so I would have to wait for another negative VR to get short this thing, and uh, I, don't, I don't like buying them up here. So the bottom line is you got a positive VR. Yes, interest rates are going up, and bonds are going down, and this is going up because it's the inverse, but uh, I, I don't want to chase it up here. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, hi, Mark. How many shares would you control if you had a full position of GWPH? A million. <laughs> <laughs> I love. I love it. I, yeah. But the thing is, I'm going to get caught because the chart I put up a moment ago, even though it looks great here, I can see it breaking 20 points or something and having a little bit of a sell-off. I'd probably get get caught. But I, I think this is something you have to have a core position in. Uh, we do at the Vice Letter. Uh, it's the blue chip in the cannabis space. So uh, it's like saying, you know, uh, if you want to be in the gold market, you know, you don't own uh, American Barrack or something. You got If you really believe in that sector, this is the strongest name in the sector. There are takeover rumors. In fact, the company, from what I understand, has hired investment bankers, and the charts to me look like $150, $175 a share. So uh, whether it goes from here or there's one more break from the mid-90s uh, up to that level, so I think you got to keep a little bit of a position and trade it, and hopefully you get lucky like I did early in the year where one day it opens up 50 points and uh, you make a lot of money. Okay, um, we're going to switch charts here. Uh, um, now what I want you to do, I'm going to give you a little bit of a hint here. Um, instead of going back into the Power Console, Mark, just type in GS. Just start typing. Now... I hit something wrong? Sorry. No, I was just going to give you a hint on how to kind of make sure that when you switch charts that the indicators stay applied. But go ahead and apply the indicators in the expert. When we switch it again, we're just going to change an option for you. Jeff is a great instructor. We all should be so lucky to have him with us <laughs> on each of our trades. That's great, Jeff. Thank you for your help. Yeah, I'm a little bit slow here, but thank you. This is how I do it. I'm the old-fashioned way. Okay, Goldman Sachs. All right, well, uh, you know, coming off the bottom here, you know, back in October, you know, two positive ERs, had some rising stochastics that kept you long, long, long. I mean, basically, you know, there were no negatives here. Uh, by positive ER, you're still uh, sort of okay, but here you had a nice rising stochastic, positive ER, got you nice long, kept you long here. Uh, the negative ER did come up here. This is a daily chart, and... Uh, Let's see here. Uh, yeah, yeah, that, yeah. I would have. If you were playing the stock, you would have been short, but stopped out on this trade because negative VR came in. You had declining stochastic. Your stop would have been that point right there. You'd have been stopped out. But there was no signal, no positive VR on this last uh, leg up, and uh, I don't like buying VRs at the top of a move. So basically, we would have caught part of the move here on all these little positive VRs, been stopped out on this trade, and I would. I would not take a trade up here after such a big move. One of the things I like to look at is just common sense in the market. You know, when you go up, you tend to pull back to breakout points. So as far as I'm concerned, Goldman Sachs looks terrific, but it's got a risk back to this high, this high. I like to see a correction in the stock. So uh, I would be waiting for a pullback and a positive ER from some lower level. And, and I wouldn't short it here unless I got negative ER, but I wouldn't be buying it on this positive ER. Uh, okay, next question. Uh, does this work on the UK FTSE 350? I live in the UK. Beautiful place, by the way. So how do I, uh, you want to pull up a chart? Uh, maybe you could give us a symbol, um, Michael. And we'll, uh, or, yeah, Michael. I need a chart. 
Yeah, because uh, the 350 is just the FTSE index, so maybe you could give us a stock we could look at and see how it looks at. Trey says, Mr. Gibby, one of the best presentations in the good wow, quick, concise, and covered a lot of ground. So, good job. I'll, I'll, send, you, I'll send you my bill. <laughs> <laughs> then he says, as the saying goes, pass the pot, other people but me. Oh, <laughs> well, we're going at them at a, one at a time, Trey. You can't... You you were next in line. Okay. Uh, Michael says ASOS. Let me see if I can full pull uh, a symbol real quick for ASOS in the UK. And I've got my icon search tool available. You you gonna look it up? Let me see. Yeah. Let me find a symbol for you. Um, just because I can navigate real quick with it. Let's uh, do in a second. It helps if I'm actually logged in. I don't, about you, I don't know about you, Jeff. I'm having a lot of fun. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ASOS.L. So now what I want you to do is start typing ASOS.L. And Spell don't it. hit enter. ASOS. ASOS. Dot L. Dot L. Now click on options. options. Up at the top. Uh, up oh, at the top. yeah. Okay. You, choose use chart as template. Okay, now click on select instrument. Isn't that easier? I learn something new every day. Thank you very much, <laughs> Jeff, because every time I create these visuals for presentations, I go through each uh, step man manually. It's very time consuming. Okay, so I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, but that's good because you're just looking at the VR signals and uh, to see if you had any, you know, you know, correlation here, and uh, I can, this, this is mixed. You know, I don't see. Uh, so this is one of the things I like to do too. You know, I put up a chart of a stock or an index. I put up my VRs and see if they, if they, you know, in theory they should work perfectly for everything, but that's not the real way the real world works. And you have to see if there's good correlation. But you know, I see some good examples and I see some bad examples here. So I know it's in a rising stochastic here, but I don't have any positive volume. So. Uh, I'm neutral. No opinion on this thing here. Okay. Now you can just type in MLR to jump to the next one. And you don't even have to go back to options. So just type in uh, MLR. Yeah. And then click uh, enter or hit enter. Miller Industries. Well, this, this, this is not Miller time. This is another company. This is not uh, the beer. In any event, nice uh, signals here in the last few weeks. Positive ER. This is the kind of stuff I love. Coming right off a of bottom. This is where I like to buy stocks. Positive ERs off bottoms and negative ERs after a, of a rally. This just conceptually, that's the way I like to do things. So positive ER, rising stochastic. Beautiful trade here for you if you got lucky enough to be in that for a couple of days. But reinforcing positive ERs along the hallway, and if you missed them, you had another trade back here. You know this was uh, on December 5th, rising stochastic positive ER, nice little trade. But now you're getting a little bit of a problem. You're getting a positive ER after a big move, which I told you I don't like to do. And what's happening now is you're getting a downtrending stochastic 533. So this would tell me, you know, be, do not take that trade if you're if not already in it. And that actually sort of, from, from a contrarian's point of view, is sort of warning me that this might be a top, the fact that you're not getting, uh, you know, confirmation in the stochastic up here. So I wouldn't be surprised if the stock starts to correct. And I, I again, I'm not shorting it. Because uh, I don't have a negative ER, but if I was long this thing, if I wasn't out already, I'd be looking to get out here, take a profit. All right, let's just speed round. TSLA. Uh, Dotto. I, I love Tesla when they break it big because uh, it, it always sets up some nice buying opportunities. Uh, most recent trade here, positive VR, rising stochastic, so it's been going up here the last few days. The stochastic starting to the verge here a little bit. Uh, yeah, it has a nice little trade there. Again, it depends what your time frame is. I'm looking for a couple day trade. So you had a couple day trade here to the upside, worked out nice. A couple day trade that here worked nice, to the, worked very nicely. Here's a negative VR, nice two or three trade to the downside. Here was only a one day trade to the upside, unfortunately, but you did get at least something there. Um, 
here's a positive ER after a rally, but you had a downtrending stochastic, so that would told you don't take that trade, which was good advice. Uh, positive ER here, a little follow through for a day or a day to the upside. Of course, a day to the upside in the stock could be five or ten points. So, you know, following that two-day rule in the in the case of Tesla may not be so wise. It looks like after one day you get a nice of enough move. Here's a negative ER, a nice couple of days to the downside there. So, you know, good correlation in terms of uh, use of the indicator, but in terms of an opinion on the stock here. Uh, trade, I'd be out of the trade because it had a nice little move and we have a diverging uh, stochastic. I'm not making any investment judgment on Tesla. I love uh, Elon Musk and I love the company overall conceptually, but we're trading the stock. So this looks to me like it, had, it was a trade and uh, you know, let somebody else make some money. Let's, let's watch for another trade. Let it pull back and give us another positive VR or let it generate a negative VR here in the next day or so and give us a reason to go short. All right, two more. And then we're going to call it. So Microsoft. My, 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 the the, the meter's, run, meter's running. <laughs> <laughs> MSFT, <Okay>. right? <laughs> dot o. I, oh, dot O, sorry. I, I messed you up, Jeff. I'm sorry. MSFT dot O. There you go. You got it. Isn't this so much easier, too? That's what I'm saying. I got I got to learn how to use the uh, the system. Uh, no signals here in the last week or so. Disappointing. It doesn't you know it doesn't mean a VR will uh, the VR system or my indicator uh, pinpoints every move in every stock. I mean there are instances like you just see here where you say how come I didn't get a VR? Well the rally started on less volume. I didn't get a VR for this last leg here. So this is just not a trade we would have taken. But before that you had a trade for the downside for two days, negative VR, declining stochastic. So you could have made a little bit of money. Here on a trade, here you had a one-day trade. Here you had a nice one, two, three-day trade to the downside, following a negative VR, declining stochastic. Here was only a one-day to the upside. Here was a two-day to the upside, confirmed. So then a nice correlation here on the trade. Just have to wait for the VRs, and we're beginning to learn uh, with many of these examples that you know, even though I have this two-day rule, we get a VR. You might be looking to get out the next day on some of these trades because uh, we don't seem to get as much follow-through as I would like. In terms of time. Okay, last one. Pot. P O T. Oh, that's 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 one that's on my recommended list. We sold it, and we're looking to buy back. That's uh, potash. Yeah, it's it's really cheap compared to where it's been. It looks like it. Up. Okay, so we we sold it because of this negative VR. We were long the stock for a trade. Actually, uh, you know, this is really cheap. If we pull up a monthly chart or weekly chart, you can see it's really down from where it's been. But so a lot of the agricultural stocks, MOS is another one has been moving uh, along with pot. So anyway, a negative VR, declining stochastic. So this got us out of a long trade. Stochastic is starting to get oversold here. So what I'm waiting for now is a little bottom here on the indicator, or at least it flattens out, and another positive VR to come in to get us back long POT. I think uh, overall, you know, it's in a bottoming phase. Uh, it's, it's, it's cheap stock. So uh, where if you were short, you know, you could have be covering here. If you took that VR, that stop was at that point there, and you could have taken a one or two day trade. If you're looking to buy it, let's wait for another positive VR to come in and for this uh, hopefully stochastic to start turning up. Okay, cool. Um, had a question we're, uh, that I'm going to answer. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and just um, change back to me. Thank you for your time. Ooh, not this page, though. <laughs> not this page either. <laughs> Don't, don't put up the dirty pictures. <laughs> <laughs> all right, this page. <laughs> Good to see what all the boring inventory accounting and stuff I'm going to do when I'm not in the classes. So the VR trader, uh, Michael asked a question, how do I kind of get a hold of this? And um, uh, I, I give a few options, but I wanted to kind of go through. It is a full integration into Metastock, uh, which means you can scan for the systems. You can, uh, it has expert advisor and expert commentary. Um, it tells you exactly where to put in your entry, um, where to put your stop loss, that kind of stuff. It's it's a full integration into Metastock. And there, uh, Mark did a really good job of showing exactly what it is and what it does. So it's a it's an add-on. It's 99 bucks a month. Um, basically, the the trial that we're offering, you can either try it for free and just use it for the next month if you want. I'd encourage you to do a buy one get three. Uh, or buy one get two free basically so you buy one you, you pay for one month and you get three to kind of evaluate it and obviously if it's something that's helpful for you obviously Mark's made it a very good 
uh, career off of trade just his volume reversal stuff. And if it works for you, then you can continue to pay monthly. Otherwise, you're just out kind of the first month. So to do that, uh, just give us a call, 800-252-9901. Email us, uh, or you can also chat online with metastock.com. I just put the link in the chat, slash sales chat. So um, that's it. Mark, do you have any final words of advice? Um, listen to what Jeff Gibby tells you. He's a very smart man. <laughs> All right. That's terrible advice. I, I just have to say. <laughs> no, thank you all for listening. I appreciate you taking the time. This is a lot of fun for me. I, I love working with Jeff and Metastock. And uh, in all sincerity, you know, you should take a look at the indicator and try to put it to use for your personal trading. I mean, this is, as you can see, all I do. And uh, even if you've got other tools and indicators, I think you're going to find this very, very helpful. And might even uh, be, you might even become a uh, addict like I am with the uh, volume reversal after you start seeing some of these uh, signals work out over time. So de definitely give it a shot. Uh, take advantage of Jeff's offer. It's, it's definitely worth it. And uh, I'm not saying that because I'm a partner on this thing. I'm saying it because I really want to help you guys make money. I mean, this is something Jeff Jeff knows the story. I've kept this indicator proprietary for decades, and until it was a 2000. 11 when we started working together it was the first time that we actually released this thing to the public and it's not available everywhere so this is something you really should look at and uh, with that thank you very much and Michael to answer your question um, yes absolutely if you have a rep here that you already work with um, uh, and they may or may not happen to be my cousin we reach out to that person the reps here <laughs> uh, you know I did it for a decade you, they we work really hard and on commission and um, they really appreciate it when you uh, reach out to them directly so feel free to reach out to Tyson um, I do want to say a few final things it's the last webinar of the year uh, we really appreciate the attendance, um, uh, pretty good crowd today, uh, but thanks for coming and thanks for all of your support. Yes, he's my cousin. I actually, you can harass him a little bit. I got him his job both times. <laughs> so uh, he is actually my cousin, Tyson Gibby. Um, but I want to thank you guys for uh, supporting us, coming to our webinars. I, I want to thank you guys that are Metastock customers. You know, um, I just feel so grateful to be able to um, work doing something that I very much enjoy all of the time and uh, so thank you for uh, thank you for uh, you know make, being part of that and I know it's a great software program uh, but I really appreciate your subscriptions and um, uh, your enthusiasm around it as well so final thoughts for the years you guys I'm g gonna get a little bit uh, you know but uh, anyway, we'll see you next year. We'll have another great lineup of speakers. Got a, a great agenda lined up for last year. I'm, I'm mapped out till May right now so in terms of what we want to do and that kind of stuff. So we have some exciting things coming up. Merry Christmas. Happy Holidays. Uh, whichever ones you happen to celebrate. Uh, we'll see you next year.